Lexus presents tennis on Sky Sports for the game changers. She's in the spotlight, isn't she? You know, everywhere you go, it's just off the court as well. You know, she went for dinner with somebody the other day and it's all in the papers, you know. How do you cope with that as a, as a young player coming through the ranks, trying to perform at a good level, but everything you do off the court kind of gets papped as well? I almost think that's the more difficult thing for Emma, mm. actually, in her career, because she's got the level of tennis, so once she can overcome the injuries, she's had the surgeries now, she's kind of drawn a line in the sand and said, I can finally train properly, mm. but it's actually dealing with all the rest of the stuff that comes with it that... You, you don't know how to deal with until you live it. So mm. it's just a, a learning curve for Emma and everything is still so, so new. So she's kind of cut a lot of the team that she had around her. She said she just wanted to make it even smaller. In fact, I think she's only with her coach at Indian Wells. You see some of the top players now, they've got physio and fitness and a coach and a psychologist. Emma's just there with her coach, Nick Cavaday. Um, so she's really keeping it as small as possible and only um, hiring people that she really knows, trusts, um, but of course you're going to go for dinner. I mean, give, give, yeah, give the girl a break. Really. She has to eat. I know. She does indeed. <laughs> you make a really good point there. Um, look, in terms of this match tonight, though, will this go somewhere in us sort of knowing where she's at then? If, if, could she beat Zabalenka? I think so. Uh, one match she played right at the start of her comeback in Auckland against Elena Svitolina, who we mentioned earlier, wife of Gail Monfils, has mm. been as high as three in the world herself. And that was a match that yeah, Emma played match. for two sets. She, OK, she sort of disappeared a bit in the third set, mm. but for two hours and two sets, she was right there with the top, top player. First set against Jabir, who's a top 10 player in Abu Dhabi. Again, she competed hard. And the four games the other day against Yastrzemska, I thought she was absolutely brilliant. It was yeah. 21 minutes tennis, but that was the sort of tennis we want to see from Raducanu. Yeah, and b because she's playing these higher level events, she's going to be drawing the top players quite early on in them. So although we're saying she hasn't won back to back, back matches until now, this mm. week, she, she's coming up against the top players, as, as Jonathan has just kind of listed off. So it's a great test for her um, and a test that she's going to have to at some point pass because if she continues to play the highest level event, she's going to keep playing the top players. And that's the big challenge now in the life of Raducanu, in the, in the business, in mm. the operation of the yeah. Raducanu career. Is, this is a career in reverse. If she's won a grand Grand Slam title yeah. in her teens, done something that virtually every other player will never get the chance to do, and she's already done it. Yeah. So now she's got to get used to working her way back up the ranking, playing tournaments that aren't quite as high profile as this one. But when the high profile opportunities do come, mm -hmm. she has to believe that she can play at that level because she's demonstrated it already in her career. Naomi, talk us through what it's like to, to, to go through those three hour epic marathon matches because we don't often see them in the women's game perhaps we're seeing them more, a little bit more often now but we haven't always seen them so what's it like to kind of keep that focus for three hours it's brutal <laughs> I, I agree we are seeing them more and more often now it, it, it's almost normal isn't it for for three hour tennis matches for the men or the women now it doesn't doesn't matter which side um but it's so tough as you say it's an individual sport and and we talk about it a lot in the in commentary and you can see as soon as a player's intensity level drops or their focus drops out just for a couple of points yeah. the, me the whole momentum shifts that quickly um, and with the scoring system in tennis it, it can just turn on its head um really really fast so you've got to stay on it and the, the psychology side of it is one of the toughest parts of tennis not only with the physical aspect of lasting for three hours mm. in an individual sport the car Cardio, the, the speed, the strength, all that stuff, but the, the psychological side of it as well is probably the toughest part. Sounds exhausting.